lesson today comes from Acts 17 through verses 16 through 34. Listen now for the word of the Lord. While Paul was waiting for them in Athens, he was deeply distressed to see that the city was full of idols. So he argued in the synagogue with the Jews and the devout persons, and also in the marketplace every day with those who happened to be there. Also some Epicurean and Stoic <laughs> philosophers debated with him. Some said, what does this babbler want to say? Others said, he seems to be a proclaimer of foreign divinities. This was because he was telling the good news about Jesus and the resurrection. So they took him and brought him to the Areopagus and asked him, may we know what this new teaching is that you are presenting? It sounds rather strange to us, so we would like to know what it means. Now all the Athenians and the foreigners living there would spend their time in nothing but telling or hearing something new. Then Paul stood in front of the Areopagus and said, Athenians, I see how extremely religious you are in every way. For as I went through the city and looked carefully at the objects of your worship, I found among them an altar to, with the inscription, to an unknown God. What therefore you worship is unknown. This I proclaim to you. The God who made the world and everything in it, he who is the Lord of heaven and earth, does not live in shrines made by human hands, nor is he served by human hands, as though he needed anything, since he himself gives to all mortals life and breath in all things. From one ancestor he made all nations to inhabit the whole earth, and he allotted the times of their existence with the boundaries of the places where they would live, so that they would search for God, and perhaps grope for him and find him, though indeed he is not far from each one of us, for in him we live and move and have our being, as even some of your own poets have said, we too are his offspring. Since we are God's offspring, we ought not to think that the deity is like gold or silver or stone or an image formed by the art of imagination of mortals. While God has overlooked the times of human ignorance, now he commands all people everywhere to repent because he has fixed the day on which he would still, in which he will have the world judged in righteousness by a man whom he has appointed. And of this he has given assurance to all by raising him from the dead. When they heard of the resurrection of the dead, some scoffed, but others said, we will hear you again about this. At that point, Paul left them. But some of them joined him and became believers, including Dionysus, the Areopagite, and a woman named Nemeris, and others with them. The Word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Well, I did something interesting. You have to follow me over here, Eric. Get ready, all right? All right, get ready. I did something interesting a few weeks ago. I uh, got some brass clean. I don't know if any of you noticed. Anybody notice? Yeah, a couple of people. Uh. I cleaned up the cross. It's not perfect yet, is it? But it's, it's better than it was and the rest of the stuff. The, the plates, y'all handle too much. I'm not going to mess with that. Because every time you touch it, it, it uh, makes a smudge and dirt gathers and tarnish and all that. <laughs> I didn't know there was stuff written on the cross. Did y'all know that there was stuff written on the cross? Inscription? There's an inscription on the cross, and uh, I'm not trying to mess it up. It says, in honor of the pace setters class. I didn't know that. <laughs> well, Lord, did you know the one you didn't? Okay. Isn't it amazing? There was so much gunk on top of that that you couldn't read it. I didn't even know there was anything written there. 
And as I scrubbed and scrubbed and polished and polished and got the brass and everything all over me and all the polish and stuff and probably ruined a pair of shorts, but that's okay. It was worth it, don't you think? And I found that inscription, and I honored the pace setters class. And some of you may not know, but the pace setters have joined in with uh, the new beginning. New life, I always get that wrong. New life class downstairs, and they made one big class. And pace setters aren't over in the building anymore. On their own, they're downstairs. And I just think that we need to give them a round of applause today, because thank you. Joined in 1958. Class was formed in 1958. That was just after I was born. <laughs> well, a few years, five years. I was five years old when the class was formed. That's not too bad. Yeah, I know I turned 60 this last week, so give me a hand. Come on. <laughs> down and, uh, still rolling. It's a good day. Pretty good. Eight members joined from two different Sunday school classes to make out a couples class. That was the new thing back in 1958 to let men and women be in the same room with each other at church. It's dangerous, but it worked out. <laughs> we don't need the whole history of the audience. It's okay. <laughs> Can anybody beat 1947? <laughs> 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 I tell you what. And isn't it great that, that Sunday school keeps going on with, with Kathy and Allison and those helping in children's Sunday school? If you, if you want to have a really interesting time and learn the stories of Jesus, go help out. Kathy is one of the best storytellers I know. And I'm a pretty good storyteller, but she's an incredible storyteller. She does all kinds of stuff that I get to help her get together on Saturday night. It's a job. Well, an unknown God. Interesting. An unknown God. A, 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 an altar with the inscription to an unknown God. A shrine made for a God that we don't know. And I thought about that all week, and I wondered, isn't that what we are? You know what our churches are? Aren't we shrines to an unknown God now? Come on, church. Yes, we are. Because the people out there look at us and they don't know who we worship. They don't know. Did you know that less than 50% of Americans go to any kind of religious service at all during the year? We are the minority. All religions are a minority in the United States today. There are more people that don't know God than do. Just let that sink in for a moment. Let it sink in. There are more people that don't know God than do. Doesn't mean they're not searching. Doesn't mean they don't want to. It just means when they look at us, they don't know if we've got it or not. Why? Well, Leonard Sweet put it this way. He said, it's the greatest story never told. The gospel. The gospel. I had a really interesting opportunity yesterday. I, I, I met a young fellow. And I, I, my wife went to the China cabinet not too cheap to buy one at the store. Amen? So I went to Craigslist. I've never done that before. It was interesting. And I found this beautiful china cabinet for one-tenth its retail price. I'm like, that's pretty good. So I go over and meet this guy, and he's in this house like you would not believe over in Plano. I mean, this thing's like 7,000 square foot house, and he's selling this china cabinet because in the room he's got too much stuff. <laughs> 
in a 7,000 square foot house. And he said he's having the state sale. So we have to kind of get a big guy, go back, take 14 trips to Plano, and make us all this work, not really, but we made at least a few. And uh, we're talking, I said, well, did your parents die or somebody? Did you be having an estate sale? He said, no, but his partner had died. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. This guy was really hurt. Man. And he said, yeah. What do you do? He said, I'm a pastor. Really? Yeah. I said, I'm so sorry for your loss. But you know what? He genuinely appreciated that. Genuinely. He was grateful. By the time we'd done all the ins and outs and paid the money and gotten it loaded, it's a monster. Got it loaded in the back of the pickup and began our journey away. He looked at Kathy and I, and he said, can I get a hug? I don't know if I look like a huggable guy or not, but I guess I do. Don't shake your head like that. <laughs> so I hugged him. And he hugged Kathy. And I can't wait till this next week because I got his phone number. I'm going to text him and say, there's a church that's nearby you. If you don't have a church home, I really wish you'd go find a grief group because you need some help. And you know, maybe, maybe he'll go because maybe the one thing that needed to happen in his life to hear that somebody you didn't have to care. Amen? It's somebody that could say, oh, I'm sorry for you lost and moved on. No, I didn't do that. I didn't to do that. Somebody took some time just to listen. Tell me about it. And you know, there's so many people on the outside of our church that look in at us and don't realize this is who we are. Russell, they don't know that we want to help. People look at us, they don't really see a God that can be known, but they see an unknown God. Church, I was amazed at how easy it was with Him. How easy it was. I really don't think people don't like us. I think they don't know us. I think most people, we are irrelevant. That's sad. Because we got so much to offer. We have so much to give. We do. It's just amazing what people can find in the riches of our hearts. And I thought, I thought this. Well, we've been here seven and a half years. I've watched many of you go through times in your lives where God got a lot more real. Amen? Where something happened in your life where you had to lean on the everlasting arms that owe him, right? You had to lean hard on God. And when you lean hard on God, God was there. And, and God became much more real than he'd ever been before for you. And, and I want to, I don't want to say that you didn't know God, but I, I think maybe you know God better now. You got me? That God has become more real. I, I laugh in a, which is your favorite cowboy Muslim? Whit. If Whit walked into church, came down here and sat down, right? And everybody, well not everybody, and all, all of you don't know who he is, 
But if he came in, a lot of us would know who Whitman was, right? And we would kind of recognize, yeah, okay. And we all go, who was Whitman? And then he comes down and says, uh, hey, Nalaheen, does Julia like her uh, thing that she's going to get for Christmas? You think she's really going to like it? Because we, you know, we talked about that uh, scooter that's an electric scooter that she's getting. You know, it's really cool, you know, and all that. We all go, wait a minute. It's one thing for us to know Whitman. It's another thing for Whitman to know Nalaheen. Amen? It's a whole different thing, isn't it? I think so often we recognize God when He walks in the room. But oh, I don't know that we know Him. Know Him to the depth that He wants us to know Him and to the depth that He knows us. God comes in here every time we gather. God walks in the room. He's here with us right now. He's as close to you and to me as the breath on our cheek. He is wanting to get to know you and He's wanting to get to know me. God is so present with us today that He wants us to know beyond a shadow of a doubt that we don't need to know anything more about Him. Just get to know me. Just get to know me. Not about me, but know me. I want to fall in love with you. That's what it's all about. Know me. Don't let me be an unknown God in the church either. Get to know me. A young lady went down to uh, the office of her apartment complex back in the 70s and she uh, was going to borrow the complex vacuum cleaner. And the manager said, well, it's up in apartment so-and-so, but you may want to wait till she brings it back. She's not the most pleasant lady in the world. That didn't deter her. She marched right up there, knocked on the door. The lady came to the door, and she goes, what do you want? So I understand you had a vacuum cleaner. Can I use it for a little bit? I'll bring it right back. No problem. She goes, I guess. And by the way, I just want to let you know that Jesus loves you. This lady told everybody that Jesus loved them. She just could not see anybody without telling them that Jesus loved them. So the lady trudges off, and she comes back with the vacuum cleaner in one hand and a shadow box in the other hand. She hands you the vacuum cleaner and she puts the shadow box in front of her and it's a stack of dried weeds in a shadow box. And she said, this is what my senior class in high school thought of me. And they gave me a bunch of weeds. Oh. Okay. So she went back into her apartment and then went to the flower shop. We got done some roses. And an arrangement. Put it in a nice vase. Walked back with the vase in one hand and the vacuum cleaner in. Knocked on the door. The lady came to the door and says, I brought the vacuum cleaner back in case you still need it. And I just want to let you know that Jesus loves you and he thinks you look like this. He thinks you look like this. I guarantee you, if you put it in your heart, if we put it in our heart, we will find somebody next week, somebody, that we can tell the good news of Jesus Christ. We can First, 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 we need to polish our crosses. We need to 
polish off the dust in our hearts and, and the grind. And we need to make sure that Jesus is real for me and for you. We need to be people that honor the Lord Jesus Christ. That's who we are. And I hope and pray that you're right, Frank. We are not a shrine to the unknown God. I hope so. But the only way we won't be a shrine to the unknown God is we pause our crosses and look for that opportunity to share with someone you know, Jesus loves you. And I can't wait this week to get on my phone and text to Derek and say, hey, bud, have I got a deal for you? What do you think? I may have to go home and polish a little bit of myself first. I know I need to. I think part of the polish is when we get used to using our crosses instead of just hauling. <laughs> That's true. Gracious Lord, thank you for the faith that Derek has. Thank you for the breath you breathe on his cheek. And thank you for the opportunity each one of us will have to meet a Derek or an Ann or a Rosie or a John this week. And when our chance comes, help us be people of the good news of Jesus Christ. And let them know that the God they don't know is the God that wants to know them. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.